Hey, um, quick video today, a quick start guide for Code Sandbox in Webflow, because when writing custom code in Webflow, you probably know the process of copying code or writing code in this section here, saving it and publishing, and then having to wait, having to refresh your site, and it can take very long, it's time consuming, and it's far from efficient if you're actually building something and you need to quickly see changes. So I use it in all my client projects. I uh, use it in all my YouTube videos as well, um, the Code Sandbox. And I got quite a few questions on how exactly it works, like to get the link to, to put here. So I thought I'd make a quick video and show you guys how it works because it's very quick and easy. So what we're going to do in Code Sandbox, create an account so you always have access to your files. And then we're going to create a new sandbox by clicking the big button or this one here. And under the quick start tab, we will select the static template from GitHub and opens up this here. Now, let me explain quickly what's going on. Up here is your file name. Um, so this is always like a random name. You can just change it to whatever you like. On the left, you have the files associated with this project. And here is a column that shows the content of the file from here on the left. And then here is a browser showing the result of your code. Because if you didn't know yet, your code sandbox project is like an actual website. It's a URL, it lives on the web. Um, so if I copy this, and if I would open it up in a new tab here, um, I see the same results. So there's, it's like an actual website. Um, so let's write JavaScript. <laughs> um, up here on the left, I can click new file. And this is where I usually create like a script.js file. I click enter and then that's my JavaScript file. You can call this whatever you like. It doesn't have to be called script.js. Sometimes when I work on big projects, I create separate files just to organize stuff. So maybe one is loader.js, the other one is sliders.js, just so I have a good overview of all the code before I put it in Webflow in the end. Um, but now we can write code here later on and we can use it on our Webflow project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this URL here, go into Webflow, and then in our custom code, part here. We're going to open up some script tag and then in the between the uh, brackets of the source link we will paste our URL and then write our file name. So I now call it script.js so make sure that whatever you call this file um, this here matches exactly what is after the slash here because this is like a hard link to a file on this website that we have. So this needs to match perfect. Then make sure to close the script tag correctly, like this, and now we're good to go. So I'm going to save and then publish my website. So now I only need to publish the Webflow project once. And then if I open this up, and if I then open up my code sandbox on the right, I can click this icon to hide the file tab and I can click the play icon here so I have a full coding view. Make it a bit smaller. And then to test if this works, we can do a quick alert. And then between brackets, we will write test. We see that there is a dot here, meaning that there is unsaved changes. So I click command S and then on the left here, so I click my left screen, I do command R and I see that the alert works. So now if whenever I write new code, um, another, and I save and I refresh on the left, and we see that the message changed. So you don't have to go through the process of publishing your Webflow project uh, for every little change and having to wait for that. So it's just uh, two keyboard shortcuts and it's very quick to see changes. Um, so that's basically it and how it works. For those interested on how exactly this works, let's dig into this. Um, in here, the link that we wrote is a direct link to the script.js file. 
So if I copy this and open it in a new tab, so including the uh, extension, I get this page and it's just, oh, I don't want to move the window, and it's just code. For example, GSAP, I think we've all used this, um, and the install helper. We usually copy this CDN link and we paste it in our Webflow project, probably without thinking too much about it. But if you would copy the URL here, and open it in a tab, you see that the thing that you're actually linking to in your Webflow site is just a whole lot of minified code. And then by linking to it in your Webflow project, um, you can use that code to, well, create GSAP animations. Uh, so that's how this works, basically. And always remember that when, for example, you're using GSAP, that this link, let's copy this, you will always have to paste it before your code sandbox. Because if you try uh, pasting it after your code sandbox and then write GSAP code in here, um, your website hasn't loaded this yet before it has loaded this. Um, so therefore you will get like reference errors and it doesn't know what you're referring to. So always paste your code sandbox as the last file and make sure that your other CDN links come first. Um, that's it basically. So if you have any specific questions, please leave a comment below. I'll be happy to help. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.